Next up, we have Piyush Modi from GE. Hello, everyone. We got probably, we're going to run a little over. Please bear with us. Uh, so I'm Piyush Modi. I'm the lab manager at GE Global Research and GE Software. It's a newly built campus with about, in last two years, we built up to about 800 people and rapidly growing so with whole focus around software. What are we doing? We're building the industrial internet. <coughs> and the topic given to me was wearable use case for industrial internet. So as we know, wearables are in fashion. We talk about it a lot. A lot of the applications really about, uh, it fancies a lot of people around consumer industries, mostly. There, there is some serious ones around fitness, healthcare, but really we are still scratching the surface when it comes to applying it in the industrial setup. So what does it mean to use wearables in industrial setup, and what's the role of augmented reality when we do that? So I, we couldn't bring our CEO here, so I have to bring his sli this slide with his picture. And really, he sees it very clearly that industrial internet will enable us to connect machines with people and data insights. That is going to change the world as we see it from GE perspective. So what is GE's world like? You can see at the bottom, we build very, very big machineries. We power the aircrafts with aircraft engines, we build locomotives, we build big MR machines, and everything we build, we help deploy with our customers. We also service it. Just to give you a glimpse of how big this is, just look at it. The servicing alone is a $45 billion per year and with a huge backlog. If you go across all the industry and add that up, it amounts to about 300 million plus hours per year, value of $20 billion. As we see, say at GE, making just 1% improvement in any of this is a big, say, big, big, big improvement and has a large value. So what are these transformation opportunities? So at our research center, what we envision is a world where machines will be all connected, they will be self-healing, and we will be moving from reactive maintenance to predictive maintenance, leveraging the data that these connected machines will produce. And as we move forward, today, if you look at the world, our technicians, engineers, or plant workers, knowledge workers, they have to go through several systems to get their data or information to do their job. Why can't it be the other way? Where contactual information gets delivered to people, it finds the people when they need it, if we are living in this predictive world. And, and finally, what that means is really, there won't be a concept called, here's a plant and here is a back office, but everything kind of merges. Wearable will have a big role to play, but think about your managers who are sitting in the back office, far away, 10 minutes walk to the factory floor, are really immersed with you right there, ability to see, check, understand how the operation is running at any given time. So that's what we mean by mobility aware adaptive workspaces. And, and what role augmented reality plays into that? So simply put, I've been thinking about it, and, and really uh, somebody else might have also used these words, but what I see is it's a simply put a digital thread that ties our physical world with the digital world. These are the two worlds that needs to come together. They are disparate, fragmented by IT systems, the silos, and, and really augmented reality has a big role to play. And how we do it? Uh, we have really, if you look across our current solutions, we, we have a long way to go. But really simply put, uh, we can divide it into these four categories. Idea is we want to sense everything. We want to sense what machine is telling us. We want to really merge it with the human senses and really bring relevance to it, saying given the context, what the goal I'm trying to achieve, what is relevant to me out of all the data that I'll be sensing in this connected world. And then finally, use my data mining and semantic web technology, et cetera, to really mine the data and augment this in what I'm sensing with the information that helps me do my job, makes me efficient, makes me productive, and do it all safely, meeting all my security requirements. And, and perhaps another leap we need to make is 
I am given this experience, how do I bring in more people? Because a lot of the tasks we do at GE are very complex. It requires a team effort, collaboration. There is a lot of processes built around it, a lot of SLAs. These are big plays, big contracts is existing and ability to keep these machines up and running so that we have those safe operations around our flights, locomotives, healthcare machines with the predictable outcomes. So how do we enable this collaboration with these people? Everybody seeing, sharing this experience, yeah, based on role, based on interest, what they're trying to achieve, they are able to augment it with the information of choice, all sharing and connected. And finally, it has to be secure, it has to be resilient and always available. So <clears throat> lots of benefits to doing this. Uh, and in the interest of time, I'm going to be skipping this. But really, ease of use is very important. We can't be ignored. You give this field worker something that doesn't work the first time, they won't come back to you. You won't get your opportunity back for years. Same thing with productivity and efficiency. It's given. If we do this right, obvious use cases are there. Many speakers have talked about it. But the one thing we don't emphasize is there are built-in checks and validity which will lead to better quality. And finally, safety and compliance. Today's device, if you see, most people worry and really fear that they, are they safe. But actually, this could be the weapon that makes it everything more safe. So let me get into the, what kind of user experiences we are envisioning. Okay, glass, recognize part. Okay, glass, engine status. Okay, bud, ready when you are. Okay, glass, hair boroscope. Move right, move left. Uh, hey, Jim? Yeah? Can you slow down a little bit? All right. Perfect, thanks. Okay, Glass, delivery directions. Thanks, Mike. Okay, Glass, fan blade delivery complete. So what we saw there was large, complex workspaces, complex parts, people collaborating with each other, and this digital thread tying them all together using the devices they can use in a eye busy, hand busy situation. And really, in manufacturing, we see, again, lots of applications around assembly, disassembly, design reviews. Even before factories are laid out, we have opportunity to simulate, verify how we're going to do this. Same thing in the locomotive space. As you can see, this 75 feet by 16 feet big hunk of machine, which goes through lots of wear and tear as it's running through. Just the clearance itself, uh, the inspection requires 62 steps. And, and simple things like, is the snow plow well aligned and is it going to do its job? Looking at the clearances of various assemblies like bearings, uh, couplings, uh, things of this sort, very manual labor, very time consuming, can be really improved with the quality checks built in. And, and finally, in the field services, especially in the oil and gas industries, uh, any time this pipeline is down or refinery has an issue, it's a big loss of money. We are not producing the oil. And, and so deployment time for some of these big machines, we call it Christmas tree, takes long time to do this. And, and how do we improve these deployment times? How do we improve the time for learning ahead of time so that when people are working this, they are more efficient and meeting the compliance requirements. So these, these are, again, all the applications waiting to happen. And, and finally, the key takeaways I would like you to have is 
there is a strong industrial value proposition here. Uh, we don't need to really worry about that given the uh, state of all those workflows waiting out there. And, and great time to innovate new use cases. However, the ecosystem needs definition. If you want to solve the, this at a GE size assets out there in the market with ma many, many applications. Uh, and if we define the ecosystem, what is the appropriate architecture so that everybody gets to participate without losing our eye on the accuracy, availability, safety, and security requirements. Okay. I'll start with that. Get this thing swapped out for the next session. Yeah. I have a quick question. Um, can take it offline if it's not directly related. Sure. Uh, is your pivotal initiative connected to this activity? Yes, it is. Okay. I'd like to speak with you on that. Definitely, would love to. Thank you very much, Piyush. Thank you. And thank you to the rest of the speakers.